Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how to make wax mesh, infused wax mesh with zero flakes without jumping through a bunch of hoops. Let's go. Red star in the cross, grow the game and treat it well. All right, so first thing you'll need is mesh, obviously. Uh, you'll need nylon mesh, nylon soft mesh. You can get it at Stringer Shack. I have some for sale on my website. You can get it at Jimalax. Probably most lacrosse online sh stores have soft mesh, and it's cheap, so it's, it's easy to get. So this is a 17 millimeter piece of nylon soft mesh. All right, so let's talk about the, uh, the properties of mesh. It is... Um, it's hydrophilic by nature, meaning it will mix with and or absorb water. That's uh, the definition of, of hydrophilic. So, you know, a sponge would be hydrophilic. Uh, something that's unaffected by water in any way would be hydrophobic. Uh, nylon mesh, it's obviously made up of nylon fibers. And, you know, the, the, the smallest of the fibers are woven with, you know, together to make bigger and bigger fibers. And so if you look at it with a microscope or, you know, real close, you'll see gaps. And there's gaps throughout, nooks and crannies throughout. If you put it in water, water will automatically be absorbed into those gaps, fill those gaps, uh, soak through. If you have melted wax and it's melted to a, a hot enough temperature, um, much like boiling water versus ice, then it's, it's moving just like water and it will fill all the nooks and crannies, just like water. And that, uh, that is infusing. So infusion, or infusing, or infused, those are buzzwords in the wax mesh industry. And really, if you put this in a liquid, and the liquid goes through it, which it will, it's infused. That's one of those jargon words that, that's used to throw out there for the consumer's benefit to make them feel even better about what they're buying. And I called mine infused, I, I did, but because it is. It, it, everyone's mesh, if it goes in liquid wax, it's infused. There are people who are doing different things with infusion. I know um, I've heard someone doing like some kind of vacuum press to push the wax through. Uh, and if you're, if you're doing a quick dip and then you do that, you know, to push it through, that's the same thing as soaking it for a minute or two minutes. It's gonna get through. There are people who uh, bake it, there are people who press it. Really all you need to do is soak it. Next thing you'll need is something to put your wax in. So my, I have three different sizes. This is my four inch half hotel pan. That's what it's called, four inch half hotel pan. You can look it up online or you can go to like a restaurant supply place. We have a grocery store where I live called Smart and Final and they've got like restaurant stuff. So I just picked these up there, they're cheap. You need two. It's a double boiler. And this, I experimented with a, this is a two inch half hotel pan. So I, I use this for the water and the two inch for the wax. I didn't like it. It's better if you have two of the same size. So you put your water in the bottom one, wax in that one, and get a lid because everything heats faster when it's covered. I learned that from Gordon Ramsay. Not personally, but I watched a show of his. So that's the, um, the four inch half hotel pan. My next size up is the four inch full hotel pan or or steam table pan that's another thing it's called this was my last batch of wax same thing you get to water in one wax in the other one get a lid and these are cheap i mean i think for two it's probably like under 20 bucks for that whole setup and then the third is my my big boy it's a it's a commercial uh steam table it's over there packed under a bunch of stuff, so I'm not gonna get it out, but it's, it comes in this big case and you open it up and it, it's heated by propane, it's got burners, and it's got two full um, hotel pans like that, but, you know, side by side. And the, the problem with this size, if you're not doing a lot, this is fine, but you have to fold the mesh, because it's not big enough to hold, have the piece all spread out. My suggestion to you would be, go small if you're just doing a couple pieces, go medium if you're doing, and I could do, I could do 500 pieces in the in the full hotel pan, just the, the one I showed you, in, in a couple hours. So it's not too hard. Next thing you need is wax. 
I'm gonna show you my waxes. Oh, this bag keeps breaking and it keeps leaking wax everywhere. It's such a bummer. All right, so this is, uh, this is soy wax. It comes in like a flake. It's a real dry wax and it's similar to a paraffin in its final product. So what you do, what I did, is every time I found a new wax, I would dye a piece with just that wax, just to kind of understand its properties a little bit. And that soy wax by itself is a dry flaky wax. Then, you know, the gold standard is white beeswax. This is in pellet form. This was a five pound bag. That's good stuff. This is a, I think a 10 pound block of paraffin. It says right there. Yeah, 10 pound paraffin. So beeswax by itself is a, it's a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice mesh. It's a little prone to dirt as it's softer. Um, paraffin is prone to flaking and gets real stiff. It's the hardest of the waxes. And then this one, which I'm not gonna open all the way, but this is a box of cream wax. Um, this, when I stumbled on this one, and it's not a, a super common wax, and I don't remember where I got it, unfortunately. It imparts a really nice softness to mesh, but if you dye, if you, if you wax a piece of mesh with just cream wax, it's gross because it's super oily. Like you'll notice this box, how dark it is. There's a part in the box where the, the wax was touching the box and in the course of about a month, it went completely oily and it's awful. So if I were to wax mesh commercially, I would need to get new cream wax because a lot of the oils have been seeped out, but it's great for a soft mesh. If I, I, you can't use very much of it, um, I don't remember what my, my ratios were, but this is what made me tr uh, start doing face-off mesh because I was like, oh, that is a great feeling mesh. Mixed with these other waxes, it was perfect. And in my final meshes, my final wax mesh formula, it was a mix of soy, beeswax, paraffin, and cream wax. So the, the, the thing that most people will be interested in is how to avoid flaking, because everyone hates flakes in wax mesh. And it's very easy. I think some people will be feel, maybe feel a little gypped when they see how easy it is to avoid flaking because <laughs> it's uh, it's easy. All right, so let's go into the kitchen and we'll try this out. All right, guys. So you'll see that I have two burners going. That's so I can cover both ends of the the hotel pan. I've got hot water in here that I got from the tap. Sounds angry already. And so then we put our wax on top of that. And we let it melt. Notice I don't have a lot of wax in there. Uh, this was my last batch. So this will be enough for, for what I'm gonna do right now, which is one piece. Um, but if I were doing a lot of pieces right now, I, I would need quite a bit more wax in there. So we'll let that heat up. And, geez, it's, it's so angry. Why, I don't understand why it does this. I'm in California, but I swear that's not an earthquake. All right, we'll be back. This is everything we need. A piece of mesh, some paper towels, and some massive tongs. Wax is ready. Take your mesh, slide it in, submerge it everywhere. You know, this is where, if your wax is hot enough, you know, that's probably plenty of time. Right there, it's gotten into little openings in the in the fibers. But my wax just melted. Might not be entirely hot enough. You can tell by how it moves. If it moves like water, it's, uh, it's plenty hot. This moves like water in slow motion. Not quite hot enough. So I'm just gonna soak it for a minute. All right, it's ready. Now, here comes the magic. This is how you get no flake. Let it drip for five, 10 seconds. This is just to save wax. Then you lay it on the paper towels right there. Then you grab a paper towel like this, and you go like this, and you push. Boom, just like that. You can use the other side if you want. You can slide it down to this side. One more little dab. And that's your wax mesh ready to go. Just have to dry it, or let it dry, I should say. There's nothing involved. And we would, what I do normally if I'm doing a lot, I leave that one there, and then I have another one ready to go, and it just keeps building up. 
Uh, so this is, we're gonna let it dry and then we'll do it the old, um, the flake test over something dark. See how it worked. All right, so I have this black jacket. Oh, there's some weird sun on it. That's okay though. There's no flakes on it. Here's our freshly waxed piece of mesh and we will stretch it out. And see my, uh, my, my formula, it's a nice flexible mesh, really good for face-offs. It's that cream wax, guys. Get your hands on some of that if you want to make a face-off mesh. It's great, but it's, look, no, no flakes at all. So it's, it's infused, it's flakeless, and all I did was heat it up, dunk it in, and dab it with paper towels. So that's, uh, that's as fancy as it gets. Or I should say that's as fancy as it needs to get. No flakes, beautiful wax formula. Just like all wax mesh, it'll get dirty. It'll, it'll hold on to dirt and it'll change over time because of that. But it's, um, this mesh is definitely good for, you know, it's good for a while. All right guys, so that's it. Make your own wax mesh. It's simple. You know, if you don't get uh, a formula that you like and you're finding you're spending too much money buying mesh and wax and this and that and trying to get it perfect, buy, buy people's mesh. You know, if you're not really in the, in the you don't want to be in the business of making it, please p keep, keep buying people's mesh. Um, they're, they're doing it, you know, and they're selling it, they're making a living with it. So wax mesh isn't going away anytime soon. And where my formula worked for me, it may not work for others. And there are some wax mesh companies out there who have fantastic formulas. All right guys, thanks for watching. And uh, let me know what you think of the video. Comment down below. Follow me on Instagram, Red Star Lax, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Click subscribe, click like, go check me out on Instagram, Red Star Lax, and be excellent to each other.